What's up you guys, Zoeb here from OneGlassTrader.com and in this week's video I'm going to walk you guys through all the features of the TradingView app. Now the TradingView app I must say is absolutely fantastic because it's so powerful it's pretty much mirrors the, uh, the website or the web-based version at TradingView.com and I don't use all the features inside the app because there are things like analysis and charting tools and things like that that I would prefer to have a bigger screen to do but you can do 99.9% .9 of things that you can do on the web version as you can do on the app and it's so good for alerts and just quickly checking positions and quickly checking prices and um, chart patterns for various templates that you've got going on. So when you log on to the app there are five main key features. You have the watch list, which is the kind of default window it goes on. You've got the chart, ideas, chats, and profile. And what I'll do, I'll go through each one of those sections in this video. So starting with the watch list, so similar to how you see it in the right-hand side as I've got it on TradingView, it's got everything that you're kind of watching. And again, for me, because I'm a currency trader predominantly, I've got all the main currencies that I'm looking at, as well as some stocks and things for investing purposes that I also track as well. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to go through some of the main key features for the watch list. So if you wanted to add a symbol, for example, uh, you click on the add button and then it gives you a list of uh, things that most popular ones that you can choose from or you can search. So, for example, let's just say we wanted to add the uh, GBP CAD um, to our watch list. Now, again, obviously, as you know, it's got various brokers on there. And if your broker's not on there, you can have a look to see when the last closed bar is. So most platforms offer or brokers offer a New York close. So um, even though I'm not with Oanda anymore, I use Oanda because my FX markets and Oanda still have the New York close bar. So um, if you want to add it, you just click, click that you want to add. And what you'll see is at the bottom, it will add that particular currency pair or symbol or whatever it is that you want to do. Now, let's say that, you know, you wanted to uh, move this up the up the list. So what you do is you click on the three dots in the top right corner and you can edit it manually or you can sort it. Um, so just showing you can sort it by last change in price, by symbol, um, et cetera, et cetera. But I personally prefer to use the edit. And then what you can do is you can use the, the three dots uh, or three lines rather and move it anywhere that you want. Let's say we wanted to add it add it to the second and then hit done and therefore it's staying and it will also be there on the uh, website version as well. Now let's just say you wanted to also remove a symbol again if you click the three dots click on edit and let's say I wanted to get rid of crude oil for uh, for example I don't know why I've actually got two of them uh, so if we delete that click on delete and then hit done to save those settings and then that has now been removed uh, from your actual uh, watch list. Now if you've got different lists on there that you can create and you can click the kind of burger menu in the top left and it will have lists that you've uh, manually created and you can add a new list in the top right corner or you can view lists by flags that you've kind of set uh, as well. So if you wanted to flag a particular symbol, what you want to do is you want to highlight or hold over and push down on a particular symbol. And what you can do, you can open the chart, you can flag it with any particular color, or you can even uh, remove the flag there and then and then that disappears and then that will obviously remove from the blue list that you've got there. So that is very counterintuitive, very similar to the... Um, web-based version and you can do pretty much everything that you can do from there. So if you wanted to now view the EURUSD as an example uh, in chart mode, you can either click it and then it will go to the chart symbol as you can see in the bottom corner or what you can do is hold it down and click on open chart. Uh, so when you're on the chart screen, what it does, it will open it up as your default kind of template it will tell you on that template what indicators you're currently running. So I've got the pivots, round numbers, multiple EAs, and Rob Booker's Knoxville Divergence. And again, very similar uh, to the uh, web-based version. You can just use your finger and kind of scroll across. And let's say you were scrolling across really, really far back um, over here. There's a little button 
in the bottom left hand corner if you click on that button it will then scroll you right back to current price action again you can use the axis to kind of you know make the chart bigger or smaller you can use your fingers to zoom uh, zoom in and out very very kind of similar basic stuff there now if you wanted to get the crosshair up what you do you just push down anywhere on the chart and then it brings the crosshair and then you can move your finger and do that and one good thing what you can do is if you just um, hover over and move the uh, vertical axis you can just move that and then you can also do the same with the horizontal axis as well now what's also clear is you can also create alerts um, utilizing this kind of feature so let's just say for example you wanted a, an alert when price gets to that uh, that missed pivot level um, so you move the crosshair over to that line uh, where that missed pivot is then there's a little plus button right next to the 1.21483 level click on that plus and then when I say to add an alert um, and there you go it's now added an alert based on your alert settings so for me it's for the app and uh, by email as well so when price gets to that level uh, I will then get an alert uh, for me there so again very similar to the uh, kind of web-based uh, web-based kind of uh, platform so that's the kind of movement what you can do on the chart and we'll add an indicator and change the template in a second um, what you can do is uh, you can obviously change the currency pair by either going back to your watch list or you can scroll through your watch list at the moment over here so if I want to see the euro JPY I can do that or I can do the GBP CAD. Or what you can do is you can click on it and you can search any symbol that is not even onside your watch list. So you can do that as well. Next thing is the uh, time frame. So if you click on the time frame, you can change it to look at, let's say we want to really look at a daily chart. It's probably not the best way to kind of look at it at the moment. Um, and uh, there you got the daily chart there. I'm just going to put that back to the uh, 30 minute. Um, just like that for now so again you've got that and then what we've got here is that we've got the uh, chart type and again you've got different things that you can do you've got Renko, Heikonashi exactly the same so if you want to change to an Heikonashi um, you can see that there that's quite straightforward to do so I'm just going to put that back to candlesticks which is what I prefer to use and then what we've got here is the um, kind of date range so if you want to see the last five days, for example, in, in one view, there it's now changed so you can see the last five days of kind of price action. So, and then it kind of defaults the uh, time frame to what it thinks relevant. So I'm just gonna go back to the uh, 30 minute chart. Um, just make that a bit better there, perfect. So that's what that feature is. And then you've got all your drawing tools. And again, you know, these are fairly standard stuff that you guys uh, will know will know about and what you can do inside here. And it's very, very straightforward. So if I wanted to add a trend line, for example, what it's on, what, what you have to do is you have to set the point of the trend line. Let's just say I'll put it there. Um, and then I tap in it and then I just, and I just drag it across. Um, and then I tap again and there's my trend line which I can move around quite change the color to whatever I want change the thickness um, and everything like that and then just do that there and there all my trend line is there and the good thing is is when you go on to your web-based platform it's all saved it's all synced up inside inside the cloud and then you can obviously delete it from there so again number of master drawings and stuff that you can do uh, the next piece then is the uh, indicators and again, you've got same thing as you see on the web platform. You've got your favorites, your built-ins, your candlestick pans, everything that you want to do. So let's just say you wanted to add the uh, Bollinger Band, if I can spell. Um, and again, I've got that as part of my favorites there. You click on it and then you click the X and then you can see the Bollinger Band has been added. And again, similar to the uh, web-based platform, you can make it invisible you can change the settings let's say you don't want the background um, and it's again very counterintuitive and very very easy very smooth uh, to be using um, the next piece then you've got you can compare symbols uh, you can look at all your alerts that you've got uh, on there and then you've got you know you can publish ideas which will go through inside the ideas section you've got back testing that you can kind of do and replay bars which again my preference is I wouldn't suggest using the the app for this even though it's built in 
I would then use the uh, the web-based version on my uh, on my desktop or laptop to kind of do that. Um, the next piece then which I want to go through is just making sure that you guys know that you can also change your templates if you've got predefined templates and have to save templates. So again, you can go to your chart settings and change the background color, the wicks, the colors and all that kind of good stuff on there. And then you can take a snapshot, you can save it. I've added the Bollinger Bands on there, so I'm just going to save the layout. Uh, so my chart is now saved. Um, but then what I can do is I can load a layout. Um, I can load, you know, the Bollinger Band and Ichimoku um trading strategy on here and again as you can see it then changes everything to that and that will then now apply to any chart that i'm now looking at there so again a lot of features on there and that's kind of the main things that really around alerts just checking on potential setups on my phone and then going on to either my vps or or onto the actual trading platform uh, to actually work work on that piece there. So that's the charting platform. Then you've got these ideas. So as we mentioned here, if you click on uh, back on the chart, you can publish an idea. Let's say you think that price is, you know, potentially going to reverse or hitting a support level. You can add in all these different things in here and then it will then pop up inside the kind of ideas section. And there's kind of uh, popular stuff. So these are ideas that um people uh people are talking about so eight people have liked this potential idea um and it's quite useful to understanding what uh what traders are doing and where their thought processes are for particular currency pairs and uh, all that kind of good stuff inside there so again i don't potentially use it because again you know i guess the really how reliable these kind of um um ideas even are i don't know like how good or how long these lot have been trading for but again it's quite interesting to to read uh and why they think that this is going to happen especially if you're con in a conflicting position currently to what an idea potentially is showing so that's pretty cool and then you can look at the popular one the new ones and then anyone that you're following uh i'm not currently following anyone uh from that section uh, then you've got your chats, like public chats that, you know, that anyone can kind of go, go into these uh, set groups that are there. Then you've also got private ones if there's people you're talking about. And then you've got your basic stuff in terms of um, your um, profile. Um, and then you've got all your settings where you can, you know, edit the profile, uh, you know, add a bio and all that kind of good stuff inside there. So again, like I said, there's many different things that you can do uh, with the uh, TradingView app. Uh, I really hope that you guys found this useful. Comment down below if there's anything in particular you want me to go into a bit more detail around probably backtesting or publishing an idea. Um, just to let you know that I am working on a couple of the OGT indicators for TradingView, so that hopefully should be live in the next few weeks, and I'll do a separate video on that. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, comment down below, like and subscribe, and I shall see you guys in the next video.